Welcome to the Breakup Recovery Podcasts by your host, Barbara Stevens. Discover the wisdom and remarkable insights of Barbara Stevens, breakup recovery mentor, author, and public speaker. Barbara offers programs and solutions for any breakup so you can turn your life around, create lasting changes for the better, and embrace life again. Hello and welcome to Breakup Recovery Podcast. I'm Barbara Stevens, your host. This is episode number 054, How to Help a Friend Through a Breakup. Friends play such a crucial role in the recovery of heartache. As a friend, there are different hats you must wear in order to guide your friend through the breakup process. You have to be a good listener, a therapist, you have to be task orientated, social coordinator, etc. So many emotions go through your mind when you're watching a close friend go through their breakup. It can bring up all the memories of your own breakup along with the heartache that you too have felt when you went through this process. It can be so distressing watching from the sidelines, knowing that all you can do is be there for your friend when they ask and are ready for help. There are so many stages that your friend will go through when dealing with their breakup, from shock, sadness, bitterness, grief, anger, withdrawal, to name but a few. It's not an easy task to help a friend through a breakup. It's not easy to relay that the emotions and the hurt they are experiencing will pass in time. And that as time goes on, they will recover, even though this might seem an impossible concept to them right now. It can place you in an awkward position as you go from being supportive and comforting to also being firm, protective and task orientated. In this podcast, I'm going to go through some of the things that you should not be doing or saying to a friend when they are going through their breakup, and some of the things that you definitely should be doing to help them through this difficult time. So let's start with the don'ts. Don't give advice, lecture or preach unless they ask for it. It can be all too easy to fall into this trap of offering opinions and suggestions or telling them your story about your breakup, what you did to get through it. Try and remember that this is their moment, their breakup, their heartache. Often the comparisons to other people's breakups will be of no help or assistance to your friend. It seems so natural to compare breakups. However, there are so many variables and differences in all breakups. And trying to compare and match all of these variables is way too difficult. The best advice I can give you, as a friend of someone who is going through a breakup, is to listen. And I'll go into that more when we get to some of the things you should be doing for them. The next don't I'd like to offer is, don't give them a time frame as to when they should be over their breakup. I'm sure they will ask, When will I be over this? When will I start to enjoy life again? When will the pain end? The expectation that they will be okay and bounce back after a day or two is way off the mark. Getting over a breakup is so different for everyone and the way we process and cope can vary depending on the circumstances. Another don't is to bag their ex-partner or tell them that they are better off without them. And don't tell them that you never liked their ex or any of the complaints that you have stored up about their behaviour. Criticisms and insults about their ex-partner's conduct or personality is not what they need to hear right now. Sure, you might feel it appropriate to use general terms like they are such a jerk for saying this or that, I can't believe they have treated you this way, things like that. There are so many cliches and sayings about breakups. One of the last sentences your friend wants to hear, especially at the beginning of their breakup, is everything happens for a reason, or I guess it just wasn't meant to be, and the right person will come along eventually. There are plenty of fish in the sea. 
you can learn from this lesson. I guess those sayings are true and people are only trying to help and to make that person who is going through the breakup feel a lot better than what they are already feeling. However, it's one of the last things someone wants to hear just after they have broken up with their ex-partner. You could possibly store these sayings for much later in the breakup process, if you have to, but my advice is to avoid these types of sayings altogether. I talked about time frames and that everyone is different in the way that they process their breakups. You may feel that they should be at a certain stage in their breakup at a set time. Say, for instance, your friend has been broken up from their ex-partner for maybe six to eight months, and your expectation is that they should have started to move on by now. They should be talking less in the negative and more in the positive. They should be thinking about going out more, meeting new people, and just socialising in general. It is important that you don't push them into doing things that you think they need to do or that they should be more advanced in the breakup process. When you are going through a breakup, there are only so many things you can do at once. The time frame is so different for everyone and the process of moving on after a breakup is so different for everyone. I would like you to just be aware of your thoughts and judgments and hold off on any expectations that you may be having. Another thing to remember is, don't assume that if you tell them to ring you if they need anything, or want to talk, that they will in fact do just that. Often a person going through a breakup doesn't want to feel like a burden or load all their problems onto you. So reach out to them and reinforce that you are in fact there to help and to support them. Let's move on to the positives and the things that you should be doing. Being there for your friend means that you are there to make sure they deal with their problems, issues and emotions. Making sure that they do not bury them so deep that they are never dealt with. Denial never helps anyone and the sooner they acknowledge what the problems are, the sooner they can work towards dealing and finding solutions for them. When I talk about dealing with them, this can mean different things for different people. For some, dealing with their issues means talking them through, crying and releasing pent-up emotions, or it can be helping with the practical things that need doing. I remember when I was going through my divorce, in the first few weeks, I was a mess. I could barely get through the day. In fact, I don't even remember how I did get through each day. I had a friend that would ring me each morning and ask how I was, and then she would assign me a task for the day. At the beginning of my breakup, it was packing up my clothes and possessions into removal boxes. After I had done that, my next task for the day was to look up the three solicitors' names I thought I would like to contact and get their details. Then I was to write down my list of questions I want to ask the solicitor, and the next day my task was to contact them and work out which one I wanted to make an appointment to see. My friend would ring me each day to make sure I had completed the previous day's task and to set another one for me to do that day. Without her help, I do not think I would have worked through all the things that I needed to do in the time frame that I did. If left to my own devices, I believe my time frame for moving forward and on after my divorce would have taken twice or even three times as long as it did. I can also tell you that there were days that I did not like my friend very much. I am sure that there was a bit of colourful language exchanged because all I wanted to do was curl up in my bed and do nothing. I felt safe when I didn't look or deal with my problems, issues, and the tasks that needed to be done. But I knew that every day she would call and I would have to be accountable for the tasks that I had agreed to do the day before. Without my friend, I am sure I would have dragged my feet on everything that needed to be done, therefore extending my breakup process and keeping me stuck in the negative place much longer than I needed to be in it. She was great for not only keeping me on track, 
but she also listened to my woes, my troubles, and the problems, even though I am sure she thought I was going in circles most days. So there is a lot of listening involved for you, allowing them to vent their frustrations, explore their options and the consequences for their decisions. If you feel that after some time they are not moving forward, or that the negativity is getting stronger, or that say they just aren't coping, you might have to suggest they seek out professional help. If you tell them that you are there for them, make sure you follow up on that statement. This could include ringing or texting them each day, dropping by their place, especially if you know they are having difficulty leaving their home. Offer to help with some of the smaller things you know that you are capable of doing. It might be picking up the children from school one day, cooking a meal for them or inviting them over for a meal at your home, encouraging them to join you in exercising or a hobby. Offer as much encouragement as you can and if you see behaviour that is worrying, you might have to gently discourage them from doing it and be the voice of reason. It might be the fact that they are obsessing over their ex, stalking them on social media, sending them upteen text messages during the day and night, ringing them whenever they are angry or upset, or doing drive-bys by their place of work or home. These behaviours need to be stopped, and as a friend it is probably going to be up to you to gently persuade them to refrain from contacting their ex-partner to vent their frustrations or to stop stalking them. They have to handle their breakup in a mature and adult fashion. No more ranting on the phone to their ex-partner. These behaviours are often regretted down the track. There are other behaviours to watch for, including use of drugs and alcohol, lack of sleep and unhealthy eating choices. You might have to sit down and voice your concern and offer better suggestions or solutions and recommend ideas that will help to distract them from their woes. When someone is going through a breakup, they can often feel very alone and vulnerable. Being there for a friend can take many forms. It could be just hanging out, watching movies, going for walks or shopping together, taking them to a new activity that they have always talked about trying. It's time to boost their self-confidence Tell them how smart or funny or beautiful they are. Tell them how strong and capable they are. Think of things that they are good at and reinforce those qualities. You must be honest though. Don't just say nice things for the sake of it or things that you think is what your friend needs to hear. From the outside looking in, you can probably see all the things that need to be done, all the things that would best suit their needs, things that they cannot see. However, you have to be patient with them. Yes, it can be frustrating for you, but you need to be able to give them hope. Their relationship has ended, and yes, it hurts, and they are angry, frightened, and unsure about their future. But if they take life one day at a time, each day accomplishing tasks and taking action that will help them to move forward, This will in turn give them hope that there are better things to come in their future. They aren't going through the breakup process alone. They are worthy and things will get better. If you feel that your friend is still struggling with their breakup, if they are experiencing intense feelings of anger, resentment and bitterness and it is taking over their life, I am here to help them in this area of moving on and coping after their breakup. I work with my clients one-on-one through my 12 Inspirational Step program. If you want to learn more about how I can help, contact me via my email or Facebook page, Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor, and book in for my free 30-minute sounding board session, and we can set up a time that suits. In this free session, you will walk away with clarity about your situation, strategies and tools to start building the future you deserve, so together we can start their journey of recovery. All my information is on my website www.barbarastevens.com.au When you are there on the website, take the opportunity 
to download for free my three easy steps to surviving your breakup. It's on the right hand side of the front page. I also have loads of free content on there, webinars that I have done and my previous podcasts. If you don't want to miss an episode of Breakup Recovery Podcast, subscribe on iTunes and I would appreciate it if you could take the time to leave a review. Also feel free to message me with any questions you have about Breakup Recovery Podcasts or subjects you want me to cover in future podcast episodes by clicking on the contact button of my website or Facebook. I am always looking for ways to help you recover from your breakup. And the last thing I'd like to say is, be gentle on yourself. You deserve happiness. If you would like to hear previous Breakup Recovery podcasts, visit barbastevens.com.au. Connect with Barbara Stevens on social media with Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor on Facebook and at You'll Be Okay on Twitter. Read further blogs, view webinar replays, and download your free ebook, Three Easy Steps to Surviving Your Breakup, and much more at barbastevens.com.au.